This planet has seen many birds come and go. Some of these birds were magnificent, some were of course very large, and some were downright terrifying. In today's video I will be looking at one iconic extinct bird from every continent around the world, and unfortunately there's quite a few birds to choose from. Of course some continents have more extinct birds than others, but we'll start off with North America. North America has a long list of iconic extinct birds, as when the Europeans arrived they changed the landscape and the ecosystem. Many birds couldn't deal with the changes, and many of them were hunted directly. One of the most iconic extinct birds of North America is the passenger pigeon, as this pigeon has a very tragic story. This bird was endemic to North America, and it was very similar in appearance to the mourning dove. For a long time, the mourning dove was thought to be its closest relative, but today it's believed to be more closely related to a different genus of American pigeons. One of the most tragic things about the passenger pigeon story was the fact that they were so abundant. At the start of the 19th century, the passenger pigeon was the most common bird in North America, and it had one of the largest populations of all birds around the world. It was believed that there were almost 5 billion of these birds, but tragically they were completely wiped out by humans. They were affected by a loss of habitat, but they were also hunted relentlessly across North America. The last passenger pigeon to have ever existed died in Cincinnati Zoo in 1914, and since then there has been a gaping hole in the North American ecosystem. These birds were such a common sight across the skies of North America, and the fact that they were wiped out so quickly is quite worrying. Some believe that the passenger pigeon is a good candidate for de-extinction, as we have plenty of passenger pigeon DNA across many museums. It is possible that we could see this bird back in the skies of North America once again, but for now all we can do is imagine. The next continent we will be taking a look at is Europe. Now Europe shares many of its birds with Africa, Asia and North America, but it has had a few endemic birds that have sadly disappeared. Many of these extinct birds were found inland, but the bird I will be including in this section was a seabird. The grey auk was a large species of flightless auk, and it could be found in Europe, North Africa and North America. It looked very similar in appearance to some penguin species, but it was not closely related to these birds. In fact, penguins were actually named after the grey auk, because when the Europeans discovered penguins, they reminded them of the grey auks back home. Unfortunately, little is known about the behaviour of these birds, but it's possible that they lived very similar lives to their close relatives, the razorbills. It's believed that they hunted for fish in shallow waters, and their main predators were orcas and white-tailed eagles. These birds were always relatively rare, as they liked to breed on rocky remote islands with easy access to the ocean, and these breeding sites are quite hard to come by. Unfortunately, once again these birds were hunted to extinction, as humans collected their feathers, meat, fat, oil and eggs. These birds were very awkward and clumsy on land so it was easy for the hunters to catch them, and the last living specimen was sighted in 1852. It really is a shame that these birds are no longer with us, as they were one of the most iconic seabirds in the northern hemisphere. The next extinct bird that we will be taking a look at was once found in Asia. Asia has a few iconic extinct birds, and many of these birds were very large. The bird we will be taking a look at was a very striking individual, and it went by the name of the pink-headed duck. The pink-headed duck was a large diving duck, and it was once found in parts of India, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Even though this bird has been feared extinct since the 1950s, it's still listed as critically endangered. There have been rumoured sightings of these birds in remote swamps, but so far searches have proven unsuccessful. The pink-headed duck was omnivorous, and it fed by dabbing and diving for animal or plant matter. This is a very similar feeding strategy to other ducks in the area, but unfortunately the pink-headed duck was always rare. The reason behind the disappearance of this duck is still unknown, but it's believed that habitat destruction played a role, and it was also hunted during colonial times. It really is a shame because this species was quite distinctive, and there are very few other birds with similar coloration. Personally, I really hope that there are still some out there, but unfortunately it looks like they're gone for good. For our next continent, we will be heading over to Oceania. 
Because Oceania is made up of many different islands, it's no surprise that it has a large number of extinct birds. Island ecosystems are extremely fragile, and invasive species can wipe out all the birds on a certain island. We've seen it on Guam with the brown tree snakes, and we've seen it in New Zealand with animals such as rats, cats, and stoats. The birds that we will be focusing on were once found in New Zealand, and this is no shock as New Zealand is the land of the birds. As I've covered many times on the channel before, New Zealand is ruled by birds, and it's been this way for millions of years. The birds in New Zealand used to be a lot larger, and some of these birds were the largest of their time. The moas are an extinct group of flightless birds, and they were once endemic to New Zealand. During the late Pleistocene, there were nine species, and some of the largest species could reach up to 3.6 meters tall. Even though they may have looked very similar to emus and ostriches, their closest relatives are a group of South American birds. It's believed that these giants mostly fed on plants, but they did have to look out for predators. Another iconic extinct bird of New Zealand is Hast's eagle, and this eagle was a predator of the moa. It's the largest eagle to have ever existed, and it was around double the size of the harpy eagle, which is one of the largest eagles of today. Before humans arrived on the shores of New Zealand, it had been isolated for almost 80 million years. This meant that its ecosystem was extremely vulnerable to outside predators, and this is what led to the downfall of the moa. Humans altered their habitat and hunted them directly, and of course they also went after their eggs. The moas couldn't deal with this new invasive predator, and they eventually disappeared around 600 years ago. It really is tragic that this bird no longer exists, as it would be one of the most iconic animals alive today. For our next story, we will be heading over to South America. Today, South America is home to many large birds, but most of these birds are herbivorous or omnivorous. This continent was once home to a large avian predator, and if they were alive today, they could easily take down humans. Terror birds are an extinct family of large carnivorous birds, and they were among the largest apex predators in South America. They thrived during the Cenozoic era, and there were quite a few iconic species. Some of the largest terror birds could grow up to 3 meters tall, and they'd prey on pretty much anything that they could find. Many terror birds were thought to be ground predators, but some of the smaller species were thought to be scavengers. Very little is known about their behavior, but they do have a few living relatives, and these relatives are the ceramas. These impressive birds are omnivorous, and they are surprisingly good hunters. This gives us an idea as to what the terror birds were like, and they probably lived up to their name. These birds went extinct an estimated 2 to 2.5 million years ago, and it's believed that this was due down to competition with mammals. If these birds were able to outcompete the mammals, we'd live in a very different world today, and maybe some of our modern day mammals wouldn't have evolved. The next continent we will be taking a look at is Antarctica. Most of Antarctica's extinct birds went extinct a long time ago, and this is especially the case with the bird that I will be focusing on. The mega penguin is an extinct species of penguin, and it's one of the largest penguins to have ever lived. It would have dwarfed the emperor penguin, as it's estimated that it had a maximum height of around 2 meters. A penguin of this size would have weighed around 115 kilograms, and if it lived to the modern day, it would have been one of the heaviest birds in the world. Unfortunately, very little is known about this species, but it would have been very interesting to see it alive. The final continent we will be taking a look at is Africa. Now, Africa was once home to possibly the most famous extinct bird in the world, and this bird is the dodo. The dodo was endemic to the island of Mauritius, and on this island it had no natural predators. Even though they don't look very much alike, its closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon, and this gives us a clue about their background. It's believed that the dodo originated from a group of pigeons that landed on the island, and over millions of years they grew larger, and eventually became flightless. With an abundance of food and no predators, they lived a very peaceful life, but unfortunately this was all ruined by humans. Mauritius was discovered by the Dutch in 1598, and they soon started hunting the dodos. These birds were also threatened by deforestation and the destruction of their nests, and this wasn't helped by the fact that they only laid one egg at a time. This meant that it was almost impossible for them to bounce back, and the last dodo was killed in 1681. 
The dodo story was meant to be a lesson in extinction, and we were never meant to make the same mistake again. Unfortunately, we didn't learn from this, and this was why there were so many birds to choose from for this video. The dodo is another candidate for de-extinction, so hopefully one day we can see these birds once again. This video was suggested by one of you guys, so I'd just like to say thank you, as I've been getting a lot of good video suggestions this week. If there are any other birds that you think should have made it into this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.